Hi guys, and welcome to your flipped lesson on uh, earthquake waves. This is Mr. Berger at Sleepy Hollow High School, and um, here we go. Uh, first, there are two types of earthquake waves. So first, there are P waves, and then there are S waves. Now, P waves, we generally refer to them as P waves because we also call them primary waves. We, we call them primary waves because they are faster. So, of course, uh, if two people are in a race, uh, the faster one will win it. So, therefore, uh, they will arrive first. That's why we call them primary. So, of course, if primary is P, then S must be, you guessed it, secondary. So this is the secondary wave, and it arrives second, which of course means it is slower. And those are the two big pieces of information we need to know about each. There is a third. P waves travel through all substances, where S waves do not travel through liquids. So these are the big differences between RP and S waves. Go ahead and flip to page 10 of your earth science reference tables. You're going to get a chart that looks like this. If we go ahead and look at the bottom of this chart where it says epicenter distance, you're going to notice a couple of things. First, the unit. Okay, I know you guys know what distance means but times 10 to the third kilometers might be a little confusing. Just so you know, if we ever extrapolate something that looks like this with an exponent, we're simply adding zeros in the case of 10. So this actually turns out to be 1,000, the three representing the number of zeros that get added after one. So the big takeaway here when we notice the unit at the bottom is representative of a thousand, that means this one actually means one thousand. Once we've established that, we should be able to figure out what each of these little boxes represents. So if we divide this thousand by the five boxes, if you guys notice, there's five boxes. So there's one here, two, three, four, and five. If we divide it by the five boxes, we get 200 kilometers. So just to keep that in mind as you count, if you're counting from two, this is 2,000. This is 2,200. This is 2,400, and so on. Let's take a look at the units now for the y-axis. We're going to look at travel time and notice that it's in minutes. So each of these is a minute. In this case, zero minutes, one minute, two minutes. How are these broken down? Well, we have to do the same thing we did before. First, we'll go to zero and one and count that in this space, right, we have a total of one minute. And that one minute is divided into how many parts? Here's one box. Here's a second box, and here's a third box. So we actually divide that one minute into three. Well, let's make it easier. One minute is actually equal to 60 seconds, and we divide 60 seconds by three, we get 20 seconds. So actually, each of these boxes that we see on the, on the left side, on the y-axis, each of these counts for... 20 seconds. So this would be 4 minutes, 20 seconds. This would be 4 minutes and, you guessed it, 40 seconds. And then finally, 5 minutes. Okay, so what's the point of this whole chart in the first place? Well, simple. It tells us how fast P and S waves move, and it gives us an amount of time that they travel over a given distance or vice versa. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, we take a distance of 1,000 kilometers. Okay? 
if we follow the chart up to each line for the PNS wave, we can figure out how long it took each wave to travel. So, for example, let's go up to the S wave for 1,000. If we follow, let's go up, follow it up to the line. You may want to do this with a straight edge. And then, of course, we follow it over like we do with a lot of charts in the reference table. And that brings us to four minutes on the dot. Notice how at this point of intersection, it was a really nice point. It kind of hit directly on there. If we did the same distance now, but for a P wave, we'd follow 1,000 up to the P line. And that, that, I think, intersects right about in the middle of 2 minutes, which would be here, and 2 minutes and 20 seconds, which would be here. So that ends up being 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So this is how you calculate travel time. Okay, let's do one more quick example, and we'll go on from there. If we Let's say we wanted to find out, okay, so it took the S wave six minutes, okay, six minutes to travel. How far did it travel? Well, if we, if we start with this six minutes and we follow it over to the S line, okay, here's the S line, and then we follow that point down, that's going to bring us right about there. And as we recall from earlier, each of these boxes is worth 200 kilometers. So this would be 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, and finally where it met up, 1,600 kilometers. And that's the uh, distance of travel for an S wave that uh, took six minutes to travel. Now, a very useful skill when we are working um, with PNS waves is going to be subtracting times. And I know subtracting times is a very confusing topic for many. So let's do a little uh, review here. So first, if we're going to be subtracting times, let's come up with some sample times. In this case, we'll start with 1230. And we're going to go ahead and subtract, let's say, 1125. Now, if you think about this, it actually might not be that difficult, but once you start putting it on paper, it com becomes a little more difficult. So we want to borrow, uh, for if we, I'm sorry, if we're going to do 0 minus 5 here on the right, we need to borrow from 3. 3 becomes a 2, and we're borrowing 10 seconds. So 10 minus 5 is 5. We'll do a 2 minus 2 is going to give us a 0. Bring down our colon. 2 minus 1. And then we get a difference of one hour and five minutes. Now, was that hard? Not too bad, right? Let's try a different example that requires a little bit more of us. Let's start this time with 12.05. And we're going to subtract 11.28. So, again, we're going to need to do some borrowing. 5 minus 8, we can't do, so we're going to need to borrow from the 0. But wait, there's nothing to borrow from the 0. So we actually have to borrow now from the 12. As soon as we cross the 12 out, that 2 becomes a 1. And this is the special thing about subtracting in this case. When you subtract over the colon... You are actually subtract, I'm sorry, you are actually borrowing, when you're borrowing over the colon, you're going to borrow a 6. Now, it seems a little weird. It's not. You're borrowing 60 seconds. So that's where that 6 comes from. So this 6 will go here, and we still now need to borrow for the 5. The 6 becomes a 5 as you subtract 1. And then... You're still borrowing 10 as long as you're on one side of the colon. 15 minus 8 is 7. 5 minus 2 is 3. 6 minus 1, I'm sorry, uh, just kidding. 1 minus 1 is 0. So you're going to actually get 37 minutes as a difference between 12.05 and 11.28. Let's do another example. If we take, for example... 
9 a.m. And we subtract away 8.59. We're going to have to do some borrowing again. So 0 minus 9, that doesn't work. 0 minus 5, that doesn't work. We're going to have to borrow from the 9. The 9, of course, becomes an 8. But again, let's go back to the rule. If we ever borrow over a parenthesis, we're borrowing a, that's right, a 6 rather than a 10. So this becomes a 6. We have to still borrow here. So this is going to become a 5. We borrow the 1. This becomes a 10. So 10 minus 9 is 1. 5 minus 5 is 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. We actually end up getting... One second. Okay? I've put up a couple examples. If you guys want to give this a try, just pause your video, give them a try, and we'll come back in just a moment with the answers. Okay, let's rock and roll. We've got on the left side, we're going to start with 725 minus 630. 5 minus 0 is 5. 2 minus 3 we can't do, so we borrow from the 7. 7 becomes a 6. We borrow over the colon. And again, when you borrow over the colon, what do you borrow? A 6. So when you take that 6, you're going to combine it with 2. 8, uh, sorry, uh, 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. 6 minus 6 is 0. We get 55 minutes for that one. Let's move on to the next one here. Okay, 12, 11. 1 minus 6 we can't do. So we're going to borrow from this one. This one becomes a 0. Then we borrow a 1 here, right? Sorry, borrow 10. So 10 and 1 is 11. 11 minus 6 is 5. 0 minus 0 is 0. And 12 minus 12 is 0. This one is 5 minutes. Finally, on the right side, 2 minus 5, we can't do. You can't borrow from the 0, so you have to borrow from the 5. 5 becomes a 4. When you borrow over the colon, you always borrow a, that's right, a 6. 6, this will, be, this will become a 6 here. We're going to need to borrow from the 6. The 6 becomes a 5. And then we're borrowing 10 here. So 12, so we borrowed from that 6. We borrowed 1, I'm sorry, we borrowed 10. We brought that over here. We have 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. 5 minus 2 is 3. And 4 minus 4 is 0. 37 minutes.